Welcome back to Empowerment Radio. I'm here with Lee McCormick, who is the co-author of Heart Reconnection. And we just talked about the importance to just get back into alignment with the heart and, uh, and also to start listening to the heart again. Uh, if you have any questions, then you just would love to get some advice from Lee or me. Call in at 800 930 to 819. Again, 800 930 to 819. Or you can also just type in your question in the chat box at Transformation Talk Radio. Now, Lee, we do have a question. And uh, Adam wrote, he asked, I cannot make a decision on whether to keep my business or sell it. I'm in my head all the time about it. How can I ask my heart for guidance? You know, that can be a whole process. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's difficult to answer that question without being able to have a conversation with the person. Um, from my I think what he may want to just uh, ask, you know, and this is a question I have for you too. It's like the voice of the heart. It's like tuning into the heart. If we're disconnected from the heart, how do we know when the heart speaks to us? How do we know when it's not fear talking or insecurity talking or old, you know, voices of the past talking? How do we know it's the heart that speaks to us? Each one of us knows ourselves in a sense. So when I began my journey um, 22 years ago of, of questioning myself, of looking at my life, um, I was 41 and I had a whole world. I had, you know, I'd lived for 41 years and I'd done a lot of things. And I, I owned a ranch and I was in the cattle industry and I was a commodities trader. Um, you know, I, I had a whole, an entire reality that I was in the middle of and the dis-ease, the, the, the just not being comfortable in my own skin, that feeling, once I began to focus on myself and once I began to read some other books, I actually checked myself into a treatment center for an addiction that I had developed but that set a process in motion of me really questioning, mm. what am I doing? Why do I keep doing what I'm doing? And I was cautioned early on, and rightfully so, to, to not, don't quit your job, don't sell your business, don't file for divorce. Develop a practice of meditation is probably one of the most effective, self-reflective, self-guiding practices I think we can develop to develop a practice that allows you to sit with yourself and to be able to feel as I've said earlier to be able to put your attention into your body into your breath and literally feel the frequency of how it feels being you being as still as you can be now this does not mean that the mind isn't chattering the mind's not talking, and even when our mind is chattering and talking, we can learn to shift our attention to the breath, to feeling our our, our butt sitting on the floor. Um, we can shift our attention to something deeper than the mind chatter, and it does take practice, and we have to, number one, we have to have the motivation and the interest and the willingness to break these patterns. Like we have to want our life to be different. That's the first caveat to all this is you right. have to really sincerely want your life to be different. And the other caveat to this is I don't think any of us have a clue what our life's going to look like on the other side of changing everything. And that brings up the fear. Exactly. You know, the unknown the unknown is really terrifying to us. Um, part of that is, is woven into the culture that we live in. But part of that is also, I think, human nature, that we're, we're, we, would, we will choose a miserable known over a potentially wonderful unknown 
most of the time because we have no faith in the unknown. Right. We have no faith beyond our own experiences, our own beliefs, and and the framework of reality that we have been acculturated to. So let me come back to in the sense of of looking at a life choice like selling a business. <clears throat> I would develop a, a meditation practice. I would develop a journaling practice. Um, I would do some of those simple things that are kind of cliche of making a list of what are the benefits of, of being in that relationship because owning a business is a relationship. Um, what are the, what are the positives of that relationship? What are the negatives of that relationship? And what are my true expectations for that relationship? For instance, um, I've done things before in my life because I need, we need to make a living. We need, you know, we need a cash flow. We need to, to keep all the balls in the air. Well, I've met a lot of people and worked with a lot of people who made a career decision based on more financial interest than anything else. It was a good business model. Looked like it would make good money. And that's why I did it. But somewhere along the line, my expectation changed. And I expected that business to fulfill me when I didn't get into that business for personal or spiritual or soulful fulfillment. Mm. I got into that business to make money. I got into that business, you know, uh, to, to build self-respect or right. garner my position in my culture. So it's really important to get clear on the why am I doing this? And again, not look at it from right, wrong, good, bad, but just be ruthlessly honest. Why am I here? Why am I doing this? And if this is not something I want to do anymore, then what are my options? What might I dream up? You know, where can I go creatively with my life? What's calling me? What's, what's in my heart? What, where is their passion for something else? And maybe a lot of times, Maybe what we need to do is simply reframe our relationship with our career and allow our career to be what it is in the way that it serves us. And then we take time and energy to put into some other relationship in our life that actually feeds us on a soul and heart level. And I think a lot of people are probably exactly at that place where out of necessity, out of the benefits or security, they hold on to something that doesn't necessarily feed their soul, but because they're resisting it or they're struggling with it, they are drained by it more than maybe it has to. And they don't necessarily look for other ways to feed themselves. Now, what I'm you know, hearing from you saying is about relationship, how we relate to aspects of our life. And, and ultimately, it's also the relationship to yourself. And one of the things that uh, you wrote in the book right at the beginning is about the, the core issue of disconnecting from your heart is believing that who you are is not enough. And, and I think that's something that then also comes into, well, if I'm not enough, I have to prove myself or if I'm not enough, I cannot really make changes and trust it's going to work out because I'm not enough. Or if I'm not enough, I cannot just go for, you know, finding out what fulfills me because who I am doesn't really deserve that. And so the I am not enoughness, I think you absolutely are right, is one of the, the core diseases of our a society that we are much more prone to believe that than we are prone or you know prone to be appreciated or celebrated just for who we are but that brings me to you know a question about the heart and the seed of the heart i mean we are talking about the heart and the importance to connecting to it but what do we find in our heart you know let's say you want to make changes i did at least six life changes in my life and every time there is certainly fear connected to it. So I understand there is this, well, what if story happening, but something inside of me believed that I have all that I need to somehow create that what I desire, but that's not necessarily always there for us. So if you connect to your heart 
do you find trust? Do you find confidence? Do you find a connection to the to the mystery? What what do you find in your heart when you are really connecting to it? Well, that my relationship with myself, um, with my heart, with my spirit, of course, has evolved over the last twenty something years. Um, you know, initially, well, all I knew is I was so tired of my life being what it had been. Hmm. And I just did not want to continue to live that way. Um, I wanted my life to feel different. I didn't like who I was. I didn't like where I was. Of course, I could entertain myself. You know, I had, I had stuff around me. But I was really, I was really lost, and I was really unhappy. I think that's the only way to say it. I just, I, it, I wasn't content, and I wasn't happy. Um, and my my reckoning with myself, one of the first things I realized and was introduced to, is look, the nature. What is the true nature of what you have given your faith to, as a human being? Is the nature of what you've given your faith to based in a belief system? Because I make up my beliefs. You know, someone can teach me something, a story of God or a story of, you know, a savior. Someone can teach me that story. I can take that story in. I can, and I do make the choice. Yes, okay, I will believe this. Or no, I don't believe that. Well, if I choose to believe it, the moment I choose to believe it, I am 100% responsible for having taken on that belief. And from that point forward, that's my belief. But that is a learned belief. That belief didn't come from direct experience necessarily. It right. came from someone teaching me that. Well, to, have, to live a relationship with our heart and spirit, our belief system and our faith needs to be reclaimed and freed up free my faith up from the things that i have believed in the past and allow my faith to be open and allow myself to sit with the unknown so that i might realize that the unknown is not the enemy and the unknown if i choose can be a fear or the unknown if i choose can be unlimited possibility and potential it's a matter of the story I'm telling myself and the energy that I'm putting into it. So I had to learn to sit with the unknown and to deal with all the stuff that came up as I was taking my life apart. And I had to keep bringing my attention back to, you know what? This is my life. It is a hundred percent my responsibility. It is my choice. And I am not a victim of anything other than some cause and effect situations that happen in the course of life that for the most part actually are random. Um, but I had to derail myself from that, from that victim nature that I think we all inherit a part of. We've all inherited a victim oriented script in life. And that's inherent in the culture of the United States. You know, that we immediately go from, from the idea that we can do something great and some things go wrong some things fall apart, we run into obstacles, or as we like to say, we fail. And the minute we go there, then we, we cop a victim's attitude. Well, right. that's just completely disempowering. Life is simply cause and effect. Some days, you, some days you say you win, some days you say you lose. The quality and character of who I am as a person doesn't change based on my performance. So do you have a feeling like after all those 20 years of self-reflection, that, you know, now that you know yourself better and you are going at times into maybe decision makings of the unknown, what do you know now about yourself that puts you at ease when you do something new or you go and venture off into the unknown? I, I really, I have to bring myself back from getting my tendency is that I will get too far ahead of myself. <laughs> um, so 
So on a regular basis, I need to bring my attention back to, okay, this is where I'm at right now. This is what's real, and this is what's true right now. This is my intention for where I believe I'm headed. And then I, I immediately look up at the universe. I, I talk to God, I, however you want to phrase that. As soon as I say this is where I'm headed, then I shift my attention into the universe and say, you know, I trust you more than I trust this world. I trust the unknown more than I trust the known. And together, I believe that we can accomplish a lot of goodness here. Hmm. And so I'm always open. I'm always open to the creator, to the mystery, to the spirit people, to God, to, to whoever, you know, what, what, whoever you pray to, whoever you have a relationship with. I'm always open to them bringing something into the equation that I haven't thought of, that I'm not aware of. So I'm always mindful of not locking my expectations down so tight that I miss an invitation or an opportunity from life that, that's even greater than anything I've imagined. So I want to have a soft hold on my expectations. I don't want a, a white knuckled lockdown hold on my expectations. I always try and stay open to, to life morphing and evolving and inviting me into something greater than what my expectation was. Or Which is a beautiful way of surrendering into the mystery of life. And too often our little control self says, no, surrendering is weakness. It's giving up. You shouldn't do this. You have to have a plan. You have to execute. You have to win. So we have all those patterns, but you... You know, and I completely relate to that. But a lot of people may have a hard time with spirituality, with the idea of the soul, of a God, or anything greater than themselves. Can you reconnect to your heart without having any kind of a spiritual experience? Or is it inevitable that you meet your soul or that greater power when you connect to your heart? Yeah, I think. I think you can have a, a direct connection to your heart and your spirit without having any kind of belief system around religion. Um, it, it is what we are. You know, what we are is consciousness. We're mm. the consciousness that gives life to this physical body. I'm not my physical body. I'm the energy that gives life to this body. And so... I can have a relationship with myself and with the life that I'm living. And I believe that relationship can be connected directly to, well, it is connected directly to my heart and spirit. And my relationship can be also a relationship where I learn to, again, I keep saying this phrase, I learn to shift my attention back to myself, back to my, my spirit, back to the presence of me and my body. And I learned to soften the hold that my mind has had on my attention so that I can feel into my intuition, basically. That's, mm -hmm. Intuition is, for me, is the most refined aspect of emotion. Intuition in the sorcerer's world, in the old Mexican sorcerer's realm intuition was seen as a direct link to spirit because we if you know we, we all have an intuitive ability we all know what it's like to get a hit on something you feel like something's going to happen or or you should do this or you shouldn't do that and we don't act on it and then then that event occurs and we're like god i should have listened to myself absolutely so, Developing the ability to hold an awareness with our intuition, with our feeling, because the body never lies. Our mind will lie because our mind's more invested in being right than it is in being happy. <laughs> you know, the mind is a, is a program. It's not unlike the hard drive of a computer with an operating system on it. And the mind needs constant reinforcement, and constant validation. So the mind will skew the fact or the mind will twist the truth to fit what the mind has given its faith to. But our intuition and our body will always 
give us a clear message of, of what's actually happening within us or around us. The body never lies to you. Uh, well, in order to hear your intuition, of course, you have to take time to be quiet and tune in. And, uh, and I really love what you just said about just seeing this as one of the most refined emotions and probably also one of the most important uh, guidance systems that we have in our lives. Now, unfortunately, our time is already over, which is too bad because there's so much we could talk about. So I have to have you back on, on the show again uh, real soon because I have many other questions and, and I love how you are sharing your wisdom. But how can people find out more about you and, and the book? You can you can find the book on Amazon or at your local bookstore. And I love supporting local bookstores. So if there is a choice, please go to the, your, your local bookstore and you can order <laughs> the Heart Reconnection Guidebook. Or it is also on Amazon. It's the Heart Reconnection Guidebook. Um, you can contact me through our healing program, our recovery center in Nashville. It is integrativelifecenter.com. You can go to our website and message, or you can reach me through spiritrecovery.com. Either one of those two websites. And it's all in one word, Spirit Recovery? Yes, spiritrecovery.com and integrativelifecenter.com. And I'd love to be back on. I'd love to have a conversation with you about intuition and, and your practice in medicine. Oh, wonderful. I love it. Well, we will definitely keep our paths crossing. <laughs> Thank you so much for today. And I'm glad that our connection worked out. And uh, Thank you for sharing all that you're doing for people that, you know, like many of us have been simply lost walking around since we haven't really listened to our heart and your book and your work certainly helps us to find more groundedness and meaning in life again. So thank you very much. And uh, well, thank you for tuning in to everyone who has listened today. Thanks for Adam for the question you asked. Thanks Carter for being in the production room and until next time goodbye